I'm going to go ahead and undo those changes again. So I'm going to choose File and then Revert because I'm going to use this specifically when we're talking about layer masks, uh, which is uh, a long ways from now, but we'll get there eventually. Okay, the next type of selection tools, I like to call them the freeform selection tools because they allow you to kind of make the decisions about where the selection is going to go and they're a little bit more customized. Um, they're not the greatest uh, selection tools for getting precise exact selections um, that are the, the exact kind of placement of the selection and angle and curve that you want, but it's, an, it's a step in the right direction. And so the three tools we're going to talk about are all lasso tools. There's the regular lasso tool, which is the hardest to use, but kind of the easiest to get started with. There's the polygonal lasso tool, which I think to me is my favorite out of all of these. Um, it allows for a lot of customization, and most importantly, you can start and you can stop. Um, so you don't have to worry about making sure your mouse doesn't move in the wrong place. And then there's the magnetic lasso tool, which um, it's somewhat intuitive. It tries to help you. It tries to figure out what you're trying to select and will kind of snap to the edge of a shape thinking that that's what you're trying to kind of pick up or grab with your selections. And so let's talk a little bit about them before I jump to Photoshop. The lasso tool is the one that is probably sitting on the surface of your tools panel and it looks like a lasso, a little piece of rope. And if you click on it, you can click and drag across your workspace and you can select whatever area you want. So you can click and kind of make a big swoop and make a circle. Or in my case, I just clicked and I kind of like wandered around like an amoeba until I got back to the beginning. Or even in the bottom right hand corner of what you're seeing now, I tried to get a leaf. Maybe I wanted to edit that leaf for some reason and I tried to select the leaf. But um, the lasso tool allows for quick selections, but maybe not precise selections. And so as you can see in my selection of the leaf in the bottom right hand corner, I tried really hard to get it perfect. I tried to make sure that it was right on the edge of the leaf, but you can see that my edges are off in places and I didn't get just the leaf. Sometimes I got more than the leaf and sometimes I kind of encroached on the leaf itself. The second lasso tool is the polygonal lasso tool and allows you to click, 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 click around the page or around what you're trying to select. And as you click, it adds like an anchor point where it says, okay, that's where the selection goes now. And then now this is the next selection and you can kind of click all the way around it. So you can get more precise selections, um, usually a little bit more quickly than with the lasso tool. And so you can see here, I wanted to select the um, eco tours, treehouse, loggers, grills, story center, suspension bridge, treetops adventure, totem poles, kids rainforest explorer sign. And so I went all the way around it and I selected it and so now it's the active area. And then I did that little trick where I desaturated the background using levels. And so now the, um, the sign is standing out on the background. There are pros and cons to all the selection tools, and so one of the cons that you'll find with this is that your selections are angular, and so it's not great for curves, and they're usually harsh edges. So there are ways to, to modify a selection to have um, feathered or softer edges, but by default with doing nothing else, you're going to get kind of really hard edged um, edges, and so it worked really well with this sign because the sign was has rough edges, right? It's a log, it has straight lines. But if I was trying to grab leaves or the edge of this bush down here or these flowers, it wouldn't have done as great a job because it works better with more angular things. The last lasso tool is the magnetic lasso tool and what happens is instead of you clicking and dragging to create a freeform selection like the lasso tool or click, 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 click clicking around a shape to create a polygono so, um, lasso selection. You simply need to click where you'd like to start your selection and then you can drag slowly around the edge of the shape and you can see that Photoshop will try to apply these little anchor points figuring out where you want your selection to go. And if you go slowly and Photoshop is not putting the anchor point where you want it to, you can combine kind of the best of both worlds between the lasso tool which you just click and then drag or the polygonal lasso tool, which you have to click, 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 because as you're dragging around the edge of this gondola, for example, um, if Photoshop didn't put the anchor point right here and I wanted one, I can click that and it will automatically apply one and then I can keep dragging. And anytime it doesn't do what I want, I can just click and say, nope, that's where that anchor point should go. That's where the selection should go next. 
And so you can see that with any of these tools, but I'm just going to um, do the example here with the magnetic lasso tool, is once you're done with the selection um, or using the tool, it will go around and it will create the marching ants or the scrolling mark here around your shape. And then you can use that to edit your document. And so in this case, what I did was I made a selection of the gondola, and then I inverted it. I did select inverse. Uh, that should say inverse, not invert. And I'll fix that before I publish the slideshow. Um, and I blurred the background, kind of making it seem like, like the gondola was moving really fast and so fast that the background was blurring. So let's jump over to Photoshop, and I will demonstrate these three selection tools. I would say, let's grab a different image just so we're not using the same image every time. I would say that the lasso tool is probably the easiest tool or selection tool to use. Um, in my previous video when I had to make a selection, I said I'm just going to grab a random selection tool. It's the easiest one to use. You can just grab it and you can kind of roughly select what you want and make the selection. It's not going to be good for fine detail or getting very precise selections. But let's say that I wanted to do some editing on this ice cream cone you could use the lasso tool to make a rough selection of the area that you want to keep. Just go around the outside. You don't want to make it too big, but you know, rough selection. And then quickly I could make a selection and now my edits can only happen in this area. And so I could apply a filter, I could apply an adjustment layer, you could even refine a selection, but we'll talk about that later in the slideshow. But it's really good for just quickly grabbing areas. And so maybe, let's deselect, I'm going to choose Command. If you're on a PC, it's Control, so anytime I say Command, use Control. But Command D, and it will deselect the selection. You could also, if you have an active selection, you can just click outside of it, and it will deselect the selection. Um, but let's say that you wanted to work on... I don't know, changing the color of the blue um, sprinkles on the ice cream cone. And there's blue in the whole image, and so you want to make sure you don't grab all of the blue in the entire image. Or Let's do green because there's not a lot of green in the image, and that will be easier for this first demo. You could make a rough selection of your ice cream cone, and then you could use that selection to make sure that when you adjust the green in the image, none of the green in these trees or this kid's jacket change when you're changing the green jimmies. And there's lots of ways to change color in Photoshop. One of the easiest way or the first ways that you'll learn um, is to use the image menu and then choose adjustments. But I'm going to duplicate my background before I do that. And if you choose image adjustments, you can choose hue and saturation. And then you can choose from the master drop down that you want to change the greens in the image. And then if you slide uh, the slider, you'll see that the gr all the green in the image starts to change color as you move the slider back and forth. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I could zoom in a little bit. And so I might want to do a color range selection, which is a little bit more advanced than what this is, but we will cover it in today's slideshow. But as you slide the hue back and forth, all of the green in the image is changing color. And so you can adjust the color. So maybe I want it to be purple. Purple looks pretty good in most places. You could even pop the saturation to make it really bright purple. Or you could lower the saturation so that it kind of blends in more. Um, but when you're doing that, what's happening is it's limiting the, the editing to whatever's inside the selection. And so as I move that slider back and forth, I just had to look at the little sprinkles on the image. I didn't have to worry about the tree back here or back here accidentally getting changed. The second lasso tool, let me get rid of that guy there, um, if you push and hold your lasso tools, is the polygonal lasso tool. And uh, the polygonal lasso tool is really good for selecting hard uh, edged shapes because as you click, you are basically determining where the selection goes. And so I like to say that you click, 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 click all the way around, you make your selection. And then what's important is you have to come back to the beginning and then you have to close it. And when you see the little circle next to your icon, Zoom in a little bit here. When you see the little circle next to your icon, that represents the close icon. It doesn't matter what Adobe program you're in. And you will close your selection and it will become active. And so, let's deselect here. If I'm talking about the Eiffel Tower, that is more angular than the ice cream. And so if I was trying to select the Eiffel Tower, I could zoom in. You can do Command plus or Control plus on your keyboard. And let's grab our polygonal lasso tool. 
and you can click around the edge of the shape that you're trying to select and it's angular you can kind of take your time I'm going probably a little bit too fast and you can come through and you can grab the edge of whatever you're trying to select all the way around we'll just cut across so that you can see we'll come back to the beginning and I'll close it oh that wasn't the beginning that's why it wasn't working let me do that again really quickly. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And so I'm just going to quickly grab the top of the Eiffel Tower again. And so with the polygonal lasso tool, you just click, click, click all the way around a shape. And then you have to close it. And so this is what I was looking for before, but I didn't realize I wasn't at the beginning. When you come back to the beginning, um, you'll have the close icon, that little circle, and you can close your selection. And then now you have a geometric type selection that has rough kind of angular edges, right? And so if I cut that out, it has very geometric um, angles that were pulled from it. But it also did a really good job of just cutting out the Eiffel Tower and not the sky background behind it. Okay, the last type of selection is going to be the magnetic um, lasso tool. And I think this one is just better demonstrated. So I'm going to zoom in so that we can see the edge of the shape that we're trying to select. And we'll do the Eiffel Tower again. And what's different about this from the other two um, lasso tools is that it's kind of a combination of the two. You have to click to start, but then all you have to do is drag your cursor kind of around the edge that you're trying to select. And as you do it, you can see that Photoshop will try to kind of wrap the selection around, in this case, the Eiffel Tower. But it doesn't do the best job. You have to close it like you do the other ones. But it doesn't do the best job. Can you see how over here it kind of got areas that you don't want and it kind of smoothed over edges that you did want? If we do that again, this time I'm going to, whoops, I can't remember when I have zoomed in on my my Photoshop or on the computer so that you can see the cursor. Um, if we zoom in here and we do the same thing over again, so I have the magnetic lasso tool selected and this time I click, as I'm dragging if it doesn't curve the way I want I can click to add an anchor point and say no that should be a hard edge there and you can kind of click your way around curves and it will try to hug better to the shape so see right there, um, it didn't put the anchor point where I wanted it to. If I had clicked down here, it would have tried to put that in the right spot. We can always come back and edit a selection. And so what I usually do is I'll kind of drag, and then when it starts to not do what I want, then I'll see how it's, it's um, let's zoom in here. Can you see how the line is straight, but now it's curved? And so if I start to pull out the line, and I notice that it's going to curve it, then I can kind of back up and say, nope, it should be straight. And so it's trying to figure out what I want to select. And so you might find yourself doing a lot of clicking on some shapes that you're trying to select, and others you don't have to. And so the benefit of this is that it's going to be good for curved shapes as well as angular shapes, whereas the lasso tool is good for curved shapes and the polygonal lasso tool is good for angular shapes, this one can kind of merge the two and create like a happy medium. Okay, before you move forward to the next video, you need to make sure that you are comfortable with all of the selections that we've talked about so far, because to me, these are the easy selections, single row, single column, kind of boring, kind of straightforward, practice using the geometric selections, start to think about how you could use them, maybe to create a border, maybe just to isolate an area for editing. And then I would like you to practice the, the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. Make sure that you feel 100% confident in them before you move on to the next video, because now we're going to start to get into some of the more complicated selections.